So, I actually get asked a lot, can Ubuntu be used as a daily driver on the Raspberry Pi 4 or Pi 400? So in this video, I'm just going to be showing some applications, some multitasking, and just showing you guys if it can really be used as a daily driver. So we're going to try to find the answer to that question in this video. But before we get started, you might notice my desktop right here, like, whoa, is that Ubuntu on the Raspberry Pi 4? Because it sure does not like look like an Ubuntu. Well, what I've done, I've really customized it because if I want to use an operating system as my daily driver, I really want to have a nice looking desktop that I really like. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of the default Ubuntu theme, so I've taken it apart right here and themed it. So I'm actually using the Dracula theme, and I actually found this from Nova Spirit Tech's video. So I'll leave a link to that video in the description below if you're interested in checking it out, because he did, it. He did an awesome review on it, and it's really awesome. So right here, if we go to Gnome Tweaks, I'll show you guys what theme and what things I'm running on my Gnome install right here. So we go right here, and in appearance, my applications is GTK Master, which is the Dracula application theme. My icons is Dracula. I just left the default cursor. I kind of enjoy it. There's nothing wrong with it. And my shell is GTK Master as well. And then my background right here is actually going to be the Ubuntu background. So I've actually, I actually really like this background and this theme because it really gives you that purple feel with the dark feel. So if you, it's better for your eyes as well without harming your eyes. And it looks incredibly well too. And you might notice my dock on the bottom. It looks like a Windows dock, doesn't it? Well, I've installed this app called Dash to Dock. Dash to Panel, I mean. And it really makes this operating system feel like a Windows system. Like if I, if I open up extensions right here and I click this button right here, it automatically hides all my applications exactly like Windows would. And it works really well. So my manually installed extensions is Dash to Panel, Pop Shell, which I actually really enjoy too. I actually covered this in one of my last videos, and it really enables you to have this really nice tiling manager on Ubuntu. So if I want to open up another app right here, I click this right here, it automatically opens up in the next window right here, and I can easily switch between them with these key bindings, and it automatically makes them feel really nice, and it just runs really well, and it really allows me to have my workflow a lot faster. So that's where I just really enjoy having these this pop shell. And these, that's basically all I changed. I did try adding the wobbly windows, but it just took way too much resources. And it really wasn't worth it on Ubuntu on the Raspberry Pi 4. So I just took that off because I couldn't like it at all. And I also did disable animations in tweaks. And that actually did help improve my performance a little, bit, a little bit because it just made it feel a lot better. And it just made the whole system feel a bit faster. So right here, animations, just turn that off. And it's just going to make the system feel a lot snappier and just a lot better. Like, watch this. The applications open up so fast now, and it just, it actually feels like a usable operating system on the Raspberry Pi 4. So now I talk about software support. So I actually do like the pre-installed terminal on here, the GNOME terminal. It has a lot of features, but I would like a few more. But overall, it's a nice terminal, and it runs pretty well. I don't really have anything negative to say about it. I mean, it's the default GNOME terminal. It's pretty cool. And yeah, so next to talk about, I like the file manager, actually. I like Nautilus. It has this really nice thing on the left side right here. You can see everything you have really easily. And it really is easy, easily accessible, and it looks really well. That's why I just enjoy the Nautilus file manager. And yeah, so next to talk about some other applications that I personally installed myself. So I was able to get PyApps and PyKiss running on here, and they actually both run incredibly well. PyApps a bit better because PyApps actually has this whole thing where it really supports 64-bit operating systems like Ubuntu because it hides all the inc incompatible apps like uh, that only work on 32-bit systems. So. It's a really good option for this operating system called Ubuntu because it all the apps that you're going to see in PyApps right here are going to work without any problem on Ubuntu. 
So let's say inside of Pi Apps right here that we want to go into like the internet folder. So we go in here and all these apps that you see in here are going to be compatible with Ubuntu on the Raspberry Pi 4. So it's actually really encouraging and like I installed Discord and it runs really well in here. So Pi Apps is definitely a plus for Ubuntu. I definitely recommend installing it. And next let's take a look at PyKiss. So like I said a minute ago, PyKiss does work on here, but not every app is going to work perfectly fine. So that is kind of the bummer. Like I tried installing an app in here and it doesn't work i tried installing duke nukem 3d which is also a game but it would not work so it must only be compatible with 32-bit systems so that is kind of a bummer but overall mo a lot of apps are compatible but some apps in the internet folder like zoom or stuff like that aren't going to work which are kind of a bummer because a lot of people do like the zoom button right here to install but it does not work so i'm just going to control c because i don't want it but PyKiss is still kind of cool that it does run on here. I also was able to get Quake running. I installed this from PyKiss and it runs really well. So this app did work from PyKiss and it runs really well. I mean, it is an old game that's free and it's not hard to run at all, but it's still cool to see running on Ubuntu this easily because it's. I, I still enjoy playing this game to be honest. It's pretty fun, even though the graphics are bad and everything like that. It's, it's a classic game and I love it. So, yeah, next let's take a look at some more applications like the Ubuntu App Store. Actually, I don't use that much to be honest because there's a lot of snaps in there and I'm just not a fan of the Snap Store. It's too heavy and I don't like it. And like I was able to install WebCord, which is Discord, and it also works really well on here. I'm able to chat while multitasking. So it's, it's a huge plus for me, to be honest. It runs really well and it's, it's all good. So now let's talk about some multitasking while running Ubuntu GNOME. So let's say I want to watch a YouTube video, I want to be running in a terminal, and I want to run a game like Quake. How will that work? Will it even work out? Let's test that out right now. So let's go over to YouTube and let's watch a YouTube video. Because I actually like to watch YouTube videos, play games, and do stuff in terminal. It just helps me to multitask and it works really well with this pop shell. So let's try that out right now. Our pop shell, let's make sure it's on. All right, let's start a Big Buck Bunny, and it actually runs pretty well, the video playback. It's actually surprising. So I don't know why that button's right there. Okay, now let's open up a terminal. Let's go show applications, and let's search for terminal. Let's open up our terminal on the left right here. All right, why is this not? Let's try to fix the web browser right here. All right. There we go. Now it's themed up. And now let's go right back and let's open up Quake. Because Quake did run pretty well. So let's see if it can handle all these three applications at once. Let's open up Quake. And in my terminal, I'm going to open HTOP just to see our system resource usage. So we're in a game right here. Let's enter, enter, enter. So looky here, I'm playing Quake right here. And it's not really dropping that many frames. And it definitely is playable. Look on the left or right right here, the video is playing incredibly well. Look at that, the video is definitely watchable at 720p, so that is also incredibly encouraging. And you look at the top right here, right now I'm using about 2 gigs of RAM, and my cores are pretty high, I'm about 60% CPU usage. So all this stuff is pretty high while doing these three applications, but it's understandable because these are heavy apps, and I mean, it, but it's just cool that they all are running pretty well. Like the video, it's not dropping many frames. It looks really well. My game right here, it were it's running and it's totally playable. So having these three applications running at one time on the Raspberry Pi 4, it's just really cool that they all work this well because it's it's just encouraging and I I'm happy about this. So let's exit out of here. And yeah, so this is video playback and multitasking on the Raspberry Pi 4 running Ubuntu all at one time. So as you saw, it ran pretty darn well. And next, I'll talk about like the desktop usage on here. Like, like I want to switch desktops. And this actually does work pretty darn well. Like I have my file manager open up in this desktop. If I want to switch over to my other desktop, I hit the super key, which is like the Windows key. I go back right here. I mean, you can see a little bit of lag and harden, but overall it works pretty well to be able to switch desktops while still maintaining that performance. So it's not the greatest, but I do like having different desktops and GNOME really brings that to you. 
So let's switch back right here. But yeah, this is Ubuntu running on my Raspberry Pi 4 as a daily driver. So as you saw, I mean, Ubuntu definitely can be a daily driver on the Raspberry Pi 4. It can do basically everything I want to do on my Raspberry Pi as a daily basis. But does it do a bit slower than, let's say, Raspberry Pi OS? Probably it does do it a bit slower. But it can accomplish everything I'm looking to do. It can run Box86, it can run Wine, and it actually runs them at a pretty well speed while considering this still is known. And I do like my desktop. My desktop looks really pretty. And so it's actually changed my mind on Ubuntu a bit because before on the other versions, they were just too slow in my opinion. It just wasn't worth running it on the Raspberry Pi 4. But this version seems to bring some more awesome things to the desktop and while using Wayland, it's pretty good, and most apps do support Wayland on here, and if they don't, I can just go back, switch over to Zorg, and I have the same performance. So, it's pretty good, and I would recommend using Ubuntu as a daily driver if you really need Ubuntu. If you want better performance, go for something like Manjaro, Raspberry Pi OS, or something like that. But overall, Ubuntu GNOME is a great option, because as you saw in this video, I was literally able to do everything I was looking to do. So... Yeah, this is Ubuntu as a daily driver on my Raspberry Pi 4. Let me know down below in the comments what you think about this. And it would be awesome if you could subscribe. And thanks for watching.